So in the last few videos in this series for Python for Beginners, I've been doing if statements and also for loops. So they're the two things that I've done in the last few videos. And the while loop, which is something we're going to cover in this video, uh, is a sort of a cross between those two things. So it's sort of between the if statement and the for loop, in my opinion. And the reason I say that is because, you know, as the name suggests, it's still a loop you know, like the for loop, so the while loop and the for loop, they're technically completely interchangeable, so you can use the for loop in place of the while loop and vice versa, but the reason I say it's sort of somewhere between the for and the if is because a while loop is also based on a condition, very much like you'd see in an if statement. So let me just try to explain that through an example. So I'm going to go into, into this Python file this loops.py file that we've been working on in the last video and I'm just going to use a multi-line comment or in other words the quotes or double quotes so you could use the single quotes as well if you wanted to but I'm going to use double quotes just because that's my preference it really doesn't matter which uh, and then do that at the end again to close that off and that's what's called a multi-line comment just as a sort of side note that's a really good way of commenting out large blocks of code rather than having to use the hash symbol all the time so now let's talk about the while loop so I'm just gonna write a quick comment here saying while loop so we know what it is it's really good to comment your code uh, just so you know you're being explicit and it'll help you to sort of understand what you're writing better as well so uh, you know when the if statement we were writing in the last uh, you know a couple of videos ago we were saying if and then a condition well the while loop is sort of similar to that so if we say while uh, this is the, the keyword for the while loop and then what, what we want here is a condition but sort of what we want to do first is define a variable and often you use a, a counter variable um, I'm just going to call it count, you could use any name you want it's just something that's used by convention uh, just because it tends to be a counter um, and I'll sort of explain that in a second. Uh, I'm just going to set that equal to zero at the moment. So uh, it's basically counting the amount of iterations that this loop is sort of making. So the amount of times the code inside this while loop is going to be run. So that's what this variable is going to be keeping track of. So we can say whilst the count is less than five, let's say, uh, we can print let's just print the count. So what that's going to do is this is the condition, you know, just like you could put in an if statement, you could say if count is less than five, print that. The only difference being is that the code inside a while loop can execute more than once, whereas in an if statement you can only execute it once and that's it. It won't ever do it more than once uh, unless you sort of wrap that, you know, all inside a while loop or something like that, or a for loop for that matter. So, yeah, this is... So, yeah, let's go ahead and run this and then we can see what happens. So, what happens here is we get what's called an infinite loop. And this can be useful in Python, but it also can be sort of very bad. It can cause what's called runtime errors, where the program just runs on indefinitely using, you know, loads of system resources, and eventually it will just fill up all its memory, and then it will just give an error. Or in a larger sort of program, it's going to crash, because it just hasn't got the memory to cope with it. So I'm going to hit Control c to exit the application, and it should do that immediately but because I have let this loop run for such a long time it's sort of got a lot stored in its buffer and now it's I need to wait for it to finish we'll just wait So you'd think this loop would, you know, be quite good because it's going to iterate through all the lines uh, inside the while loop. So in this case, it's just this print statement here, and it's going to print count as long as count is less than five. So we can run this and see what happens. But what you get is a constant output, and 
this is what's called an infinite loop in Python. So the while loop is just going on indefinitely. And the reason for that is because count is less than five, and that's true. And because it's true, it's executing the lines, or in this case, just the one line inside the loop. But because it's always true and count never changes, it's always equal to zero, uh, it's just going to keep running, it's always going to be true. So the way that we can solve this, or you know, so that we can run the loop a finite amount of times, is we can say count is equal to count plus one. So what this says is take the original value for count and add one to it, and then, you know, the value of this, assign that back into the variable count. So that's a really good way of saying, you know, every iteration add one to the counter variable. So if we go ahead and run that, we can see that it should just output, there you go, five times, because we've got five outputs. But one thing that we could improve about this program is we can say this in a shorter way. So instead of saying count equals to count plus one, we can instead say plus equal to one. And this is an assignment operator that you probably haven't seen before, but it's a really good way of saying uh, what we had said previously, which is this, but just shorter. So, so that's a really good way of shortening your code uh, and making it more readable, because it's really sort of easy to understand that and then when you run that again you'll see you get the exact same output because it's doing the same thing. So that's the while loop in Python, I hope that was at least somewhat helpful and in the next one we're going to be covering something which is really kind of powerful in Python and it's going to allow us to sort of even evolve our programs further uh, you know more than we've done so at the moment and we're probably going to go back to the little calculator we were making at the start of this series as well and pr improve that using functions.